Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's a uh, Saki and Frenzy here. So today I'm just gonna, you know, show you a little update of my succulent propagations in one month or two months, one month and a week. Yeah, just one month. So here is the first tray that I ever put it out here. So here is an area where there's two big tiles with pots on top with hi um desert rose or adeniums and here you have some baby adeniums anyway back to the thing so here there is two tiles and just a slightly little um space to have sunlight for it and yeah i got these beautiful blue little babies so here we have some of those ghost plants i think or super bomb i think is ghost plant this is ghost plant this is super bomb um this is um i'm not sure what is this i think it's i don't know i'm not sure what is that i'm not sure what is this too but it's a it's a second <laughs> I don't really label them much. This is like um, copper sunset or something. That's our sedum or echeveria. Just got a few random leaves, you know, propagating here. We got some suyon. Yeah. So as you can see, the ones that are inside, which is like, let's say here, it's more deeper into this side. The colors are not really that vibrant. As you can see, this is supposed to be like this. As you can see, like the purple on it is fabulous and fantastic. But for some reason, this is going into this hot side instead of going upwards. But it's okay. And this one here is green. See that? It's green. These are purple. That is green. So, this is the first tray, and the second tray I want to show you guys is this one. So, this is a one that I recently just put it out right here. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, here's the one that I recently just put out here. There is Echeveria Black Prince, which was from the actual mother plant if you've seen it in previous videos I have one which is this big and it died on me and got attacked by mealybugs and some other rot on it that causes some mealybugs <laughs> and uh, I got some healthy leaves look at that we got pups. We got cute little babies blooming on it. I mean, some of the leaves, like you see this one here, is not really going off because this is not a clean um, pluck from the plant. Now, how do you tell it's a clean pluck from the plant? It means the whole leaf is still intact and it should shape, um, it should have the shape of the stem that is curved perfectly on there if it breaks like this it won't work but if it breaks nicely and just snap off properly you will have pups like this see that so here are some black prints here is a super bum yeah it's a super bum here we got some um what are these? Uh, Varahegans that are green. Here we got a Graptopetalum, some sort. Yeah, so here is a few trays I have. Now, I'm gonna take you and show you guys this pot, which I put some of the babies of the Varahegans in here. Okay, here we go. There we go. 
So see these, these are all the babies that I propagate from leaf. This here is about, oops, okay, this here is about um, two months, two to three months, and there's two heads and it's growing healthily outdoors. And here we got one which is another one I put it in just beside it. This is just a month old. This is about three weeks. Three weeks. Um, here we have one that is also three weeks. Three weeks, three weeks, and there's like one right in here. Like behind the big mother plant. So yeah, they're all nice and stressed, they're all red and bright. And if I put it in full sun, that is what you'll see. The pop of the, the big red bright coppery colors. Isn't that wonderful? So okay. Now I'm just gonna give you guys another update on some of my other older plants that I have. So you may know all these that I explained on how do you stress them in the previous video, right? So I put out a new plant which haven't been sunned for quite some time. And this is a Echeveria Malaco. As you can see, it's super, super stretched out and it does not look nice. It's not stressed because when it's stressed, it'll get that super darkish, like a blood red kind of color, you know. So I just put it today with extra special um, draining soil. It has to be super draining because you do not want to have water that is trapped inside holding. I mean, you don't have soil that traps water inside and holding the water inside because plants, they, even though they like water, they do not like to sit in water, if you know what I mean. Um, you want to prevent them from rotting and bugs and pests. So, as you guys could see, this Prova Nonberg that I have and I've shown in the previous video. It was dark, so you can't really see the colors, but now you could. Look at the wonderful colors on that. Look at the purple. The purple is stunning. Then this is a super, super stressed topsy-turvy. That is pink. Other than this big mama right here. That is just blue. Like a bluish purple. We got some Grepto Pet Greptovaria blush. So we got two pups there. One right there and the other just underneath this leaf right here. Right there. Hi. There's another one which is growing from the stem there. It's growing from the mother stem. And I think there is more bulbs coming up soon. Wait, hold up. The leaf is growing there, okay. Aside. Alright. Okay. <laughs> now all these propagations, I did it from leaf propagating. So there's like one tiny little bulb right there growing. That's another pop that is going to come up soon. Now I really do want to know... Um, why does my um, sedum jelly bean have these devastating polka dots? It's like mold, it's like fungi and everything. And I only have just this stem left that is surviving. There's another one here that has been attacked by fungi and everything, I think. Because it's not directly with sun. Here is like barely having any sunlight. So I really do not know what happened. And it barely even get any rain. So the soil is crispy dry. 
like they this plant I haven't even watered it for almost I don't know a month a whole month and it's uh dry and it's only this left with a bunch of these polka dots I'm so confused so if anyone knows what happened to this um, sedum jelly bean please do tell me please it'll be very helpful then there's like this um atrovaria some sort of atrovaria there's like this that is a sunburn that is an actual sunburn compared to these i don't think it's sunburn so yeah it's confusing and here we have a clan koi from the cuttings that we saw that time in the other videos it's doing well it's getting there it's having the time of its life having its new beautiful life as you can see this here that is stress you can see the slight tinge of red on the edges right there so this plant here look beautiful. This clan koi, I got a f I got three cuttings. One of them didn't make it, so I just chopped the ones that are still healthy. And look, they're growing healthily. They are wonderful. So I'm just gonna put it back into its space where it's perfect for it. So the chihuahua, Echeveria chihuahua, I really need to put it out because the leaves are going down and it's pushing the roots and everything out from the soil. It's not good for them. Then we got um, this Pactifarium compactum or little jewel leaf propagating propagation that we bought from a nursery if you guys want to check the video out I got all some of these plants from my previous few videos I guess but yeah they look nice and healthy I still haven't changed the pot I don't with I don't want to change the pot for now because they're still so tiny so I'm just scared I will shock them and then here we got these be my little beautiful variegated um, uh, arrangement with three different kinds of succulents. We got um, this Echinapsaurus crinata variegated. Then we got an um sunset, and we got a what is that? Tentiana V Cressula Ima David something at the back right here. So the bloom stock is still there, but it's gone now. Eh. We got some chromas. They still have that beautiful variegation on it, and I love it. And then the more it grows, it has those little pink tips on the leaves. Those little itty bitty pink tips, which are okay. Then at the back, we have Portucalara or Portulaca melocaniensis. It has grown slightly. Look at this. Isn't it cute? It looks like a, fl um, a flapjack but in a miniature version. It's beautiful. Then we got some red Echeveria purposum. I really don't know the name of it but it's red so I just say Red Echeveria Papostrum is growing nicely. Like, look at that. Beautiful. Then we have the big queen Papostrum at the back. Ever. Let me get it. Just right here. Look at this. Big queen. Isn't it stunning? It's massive. And I got that for a good deal, so... So... Yeah. 
Oh, here's a uh, sedum elevated Tony stone cap. Oh, look at that. Isn't it cute? Now, the whole time I thought this was a moonstone, but it wasn't. It was a elevated stone cap. Ellen Tioidis. It's sort of sedum. So it's so cute. So this is actually not a opalina. It's actually an orpet. So I got the name wrong again. <laughs> but it looks nice. It's a little bit stretched out, but it's okay. And then here is the Graptopatulum Superbone. Look at that. Beautiful. Ghost, Echeveria, at the back there, living its best life. And then we got some other sedums here. We got two kinds of sedums, if you remember. I put a sedums dragon blood and sedum tricolor in there, and they are nice and stunning. So, yeah, these are some Kalankoi pups that I collected. They look so cute and fresh and green. And here are some leftover propagations that I am still leaving it here because they're not ready to go out to the big white world. So yeah. Oh and this is a cutting that I made on this Gattoveria right here. And it has rooted and it's so cute and nice. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, this little update um, on my succulents and propagations. You can subscribe and uh, click the notification bell down below. So see you guys next time. Bye.